Many Christians report having erotic dreams frequently, but why do these types of thoughts come to our minds while we sleep? Are we sinning when we dream about having sexual relations? Most people who experience this type of dream fear that they have sinned against God and carry the weight of guilt on their shoulders. I've heard reports of people, out of fear of having sinned in a dream, end up not sleeping well, affecting their quality of life. The first thing I need to tell you about these dreams is that I don't know exactly why this is happening to you. It could be something physical, hormonal, psychological, or even a spiritual attack in which the enemy takes advantage of your weaknesses and tries to oppress you. The Bible says that we are in the midst of a spiritual battle, which can bring unwanted dreams, although it's very difficult to determine when a dream is truly the work of Satan. Most dreams we have are products of our minds, so we shouldn't assume that every dream has a spiritual meaning. However, I've talked to people who had terrible nightmares where they were sexually abused by some spiritual being that visited them at night, and they engaged in sexual acts. Yes, this happens, especially to those who have had involvement with the occult in the past, and these experiences are obviously demonic. Regardless of what it is, I'm glad to know that you are concerned about this situation and what these dreams may cause in your spiritual life. Therefore, today I will show you four reasons why you and I have dreams and what they can mean in our lives. In the end, I will also give you five practical tips to help you eliminate these sexual dreams from your sleep, okay? But before we start, I want to ask you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell so you'll be notified by YouTube whenever I post a new video. Amen? So. Let's get started. The first thing you need to know is that dreams can convey false messages. Let's see what the Lord says. I have heard what the prophets say who prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream. I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? Look at this, brothers and sisters. Dreams can indeed be false, meaning they have nothing to do with reality and they may not be a revelation from God. In fact, this passage from the prophet Jeremiah shows us that Satan or even our own minds have the power to plant false situations in our subconscious that go against the word of the Lord. So, when you have a sexual dream where you are betraying your spouse or engaging physically with someone else, pray to God to deliver you from these nightmares and not allow what your subconscious projected during sleep to interfere with your daily life, okay? Secondly, Dreams can serve as warnings. In Job chapter 33, the word of the Lord tells us, For God does speak now one way, now another ayur, though no one perceives it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings, to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride, to preserve them from the pit, their lives from perishing by the sword. Look at this, brothers and sisters. This is wonderful. This passage teaches us that God indeed uses dreams to warn us and prevent us from sinning. So, if you have been dreaming about sexual acts very frequently, it could be that the Lord is sending you a warning message to prevent you from falling into sin in the near future. If that's the case, you should be very attentive to situations that may arise in your daily life because what may seem like a great opportunity is actually a trap set by Satan to defeat you make you sin, and distance you from the presence of God, okay? Stay very alert. Thirdly, dreams can test us. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, it is written, If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you, and announces to you a sign or wonder, and if the sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, Let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. Look at this, brothers and sisters. God may allow the devil to use false prophets and deceptive dreams, even accompanied by signs and wonders, to test his people and see if they will not stray from his ways. So, if this happens to you, remember that the devil, your brain, your hormones or whatever it may be will not defeat you or make you give up on your Christian journey. Instead of succumbing to fear or guilt for having dreamed about something related to sexuality, 
Remember that you will not be condemned if you remain steadfast in the word of God, because the Lord will sustain you and remove from your mind anything that keeps you away from him. Amen. And fourthly, dreams can reveal our desires. This message I'm about to read to you is in Isaiah chapter 29, and I would really appreciate it if you paid attention to what it says. Look at what is written. Then the hordes of all the nations that fight against Ariel, that attack her and her fortress and besiege her, will be as it is with a dream, with a vision in the night, as when a hungry man dreams that he is eating, but he awakens, and his hunger remains, as when a thirsty man dreams that he is drinking, but he awakens faint, with his thirst unquenched. So will it be with the hordes of all the nations that fight against Mount Zion, Look at this, brothers and sisters. This passage proves to us that in many situations, dreams signal our deepest desires and needs, including sexual ones. In other words, if you go to bed very thirsty, you may dream of drinking something. If you sleep hungry, you may end up dreaming of a feast, for example. And if you have desires related to sexuality, you may well end up fantasizing about situations in your mind while you are sleeping, all because of your desire, hormones, and other factors. But this doesn't explain why you are dreaming about other people than your spouse, if you are married. The question is, what is leading you to have these dreams? And that's where the issue of sin comes in. These erotic dreams may be related to temptations from the enemy, if you have been without sex in your marriage for a long time, or it could be a test or a warning from God. In these cases, there is no sin because you cannot control what comes into your subconscious. Now, if these dreams are the result of lusting after someone other than your spouse, or because you have been feeding your sexual fantasies with pornography, then you are sinning, not in the dream, but in your daily life. In this case, it is up to you to change your life and not give space to sin, okay? Let's see what the Bible says. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So, this is very serious, brothers and sisters. And you might be wondering now, but pastor, how can I get rid of these erotic dreams and have a holier life? Therefore, I will give you four quick tips to help you. First, pray sincerely asking the Lord to free you from these dreams. Also, ask close and trustworthy people to help you by praying for you, okay? Second, read the Bible and listen to sermons before going to bed. God's word in your heart will fill your mind and heart with the Holy Spirit, helping you to sleep in peace. Third, remove all sexualized content from your life that may exist in movies, series, soap operas, and websites you usually follow. I'm not only talking about pornography, but also about the sexuality contained in practically everything we see in our daily lives. So, filter well what you see, okay? And fourth, seek spiritual and professional help if your case is not easily resolved. A pastor can guide you on how to have a more intimate life with God and more distant from the world. And a psychologist can help you identify the triggers that lead you to have these sexualized dreams so frequently, okay? So, this is the message I wanted to bring to you. I hope you have learned a lot, and be assured, I would be praying for you to be liberated from these dreams. And remember one thing, you are weak. You need the Lord's help. Never think that you can win this battle alone, okay? Just like the psalmist who made a beautiful prayer in Psalm 25, he said, My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only He will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, if you liked this message, I ask you to share it. Send it to your WhatsApp groups on Facebook. Let's spread the word of God. Amen. And I'll see you in the next video. May God bless you.